Welcome to Lemoore City Council Chambers, located at 429 C Street. This is our December 5th meeting. Please silence all electronic devices as a courtesy to those in attendance. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and start with our invocation by Pastor James Jones. And if you could remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Tito with Lemoore Little League. As we bow our heads, Lord, in your precious name, we thank you. Lord, for this city council meeting, Lord, and for all the, of those that are in attendance. We're here, Lord, to ask your blessings upon them, Lord, upon their families, Lord, upon their homes. We ask, Lord, that you would give them divine protection, peace, and prosperity. In Jesus' name, amen. Blood to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which is the man. For the nation under God, indivisible, where the regime Thank you. Marissa. Councilmember Garza? Present. Councilmember Lyons? I'm here. Councilmember Orth? I'm here too. Mayor Pro Tem Gornick? Here. And Mayor Matthews? Here with bells on. Thank you. Literally. Um, agenda approval, additions, and or deletions. Uh, we're going to. Oh, that's for you. Okay. We're going to do a little switcheroo in our um, lineup tonight. We're going to move ceremonial presentations to the beginning. So um, we have item 2-1, Jingle and Mingle raffle winners. So um, Mr. Greenlee. <laughs> come on, Nye. Come on, Steph. Adam. Get up. Come on, guys. Console. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can't get my own crew to support me. Come on, guys. Back me up. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we wanted to do our raffle. Uh, this seems to be an annual event now. And our second year, uh, we had a sorry, we had a great turnout. Um, the difference this year than last year was that we had consistency. When we first got out there, it was really full and it stayed full all during the day where last year we had pockets, like there was hardly anybody out there. So um, we made some changes to where the vendors were. We tried to space it out a little bit differently and move some people around. And it may have looked like we didn't have as many vendors, but we did. So we had the same amount that we had last year. So I just wanted to... Yes, and Stephanie said also we had more businesses who participated this year than we had last year. So it was really great. I want to thank everybody that showed up out there. Thank Consul for being there, the ones that were able to make it. Um, thank all the downtown merchants, the businesses, everybody who supported us. Uh, we have a wonderful raffle this year, the best ever. We're just, I'm so shocked at how Stephanie and I did such an awesome job of going around and asking people and the charity that we received. So I think it's really awesome. So what we'd like to do tonight is we're gonna, we have a slide up and we're going to pull the drum up and then we're gonna have a council member come up and do the selection. And once we go through all the council and of course, Mary and the city manager, then we'll ask some other people here in the audience, the chief of police, Frank, Michelle, whoever else can help us get uh, get through everything but uh but we really want to thank again everybody um man it's just outstanding it really is it's great to see the community come together the way it does and uh, I, I just love it how can you not love Lamore? i mean it's just an awesome place that's for sure so I'll without that <laughs> <laughs> so without i guess the term further ado um this was all scripted by the way um no, i'm kidding um so what do you want to do? The first one will be curly, curly craps. So Mr. Garza, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. Got to roll. Well, we are, we're going to, we're going to shake it up. Yeah. We're going to wait till it gets down. 
And just to highlight, um, this was one of our vendors. She um, saw our flyer on social media where we did need um, some more donations for Discover Downtown, which was to really highlight our downtown businesses. And she actually donated this mug um, that has the Lemoore High School Tiger on it. Pick a good one. Oh, there you go. He wants to read it all. I'm not good with names. <laughs> I'll butcher it. We have Heather Bittner. And so we'll be contacting you. If you're watching, we'll be contacting you guys. Awesome. So the next one we have up is South Valley Church. And do we have any representatives from South Valley here too? Awesome. So here we have Ricky Hemi. Um, and so, um, no, we just wanted to really um, have a picture of yep. you really quick to thank you also with the person that's picking it out as well. Well, see, I didn't select you, but go ahead. Well, three of you are going to go on. So, you're going to stand there with me. You'll stand there with them. You'll go by the front. Right here. What? Am I? Am I? I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 well, let me get a picture. This was thought out. <laughs> are you going to read the names here? Uh, let's get a picture together first. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> 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 no, you did. Did you? And the winner of the South Valley basket is Sophie Berlanga. So we'll be contacting them also. Thank you again to South Valley Church. All right. The next one is we have somebody from the community who donated. He just came in and dropped off some stuff for us. So uh, I guess next up will be David. <laughs> oh, they fall out. <laughs> Thank you so much. And the winner of the soccer ball and the football goes out to Blanca Pablo. Pablo. We'll be contacting them. Thank okay, you so um, much. Dr. Gornick, I'm going to skip you and the mayor right now, if okay. you don't mind. We got skipped. And then I'll, Mary, will you be able to come up, please? <laughs> the next one is from Legacy Barbershop and Legacy Salon. What's happening? Are they here? Thank you very much. Denise. And the winner of the Legacy Barbershop and Legacy Salon um, basket goes to Denise Doria. Okay, Nathan, our next one here is Mr. Balloons. This sucker is hot. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> And the winner of Mr. Balloon's um, gift certificate goes to Denise Zanika. All right. Okay. So, Mr. Chief of Police, would you mind standing up? Sure. Okay. We have Newman Garcia Photo Studio. We do have Jesus here. That's a good one. Yeah. Do, you, do what you want. You got the gun. That's it. That's it. Ready, Mr. What? It's probably. One, two, three, two. Oh, I'm going to see. Hmm. 
Whatever. Yeah. And the winner of um, Mr. Garcia, I mean, Newman Garcia photo, uh, Garcia photo studio certificate goes to Dylan Proudman. He's actually a participant of ours. Okay. So let's see. Frank, do you want to come up next, please? Yeah. So we have Leon Super Arcado Leon. I hopefully didn't butcher that up. That one's not one anymore. Oh. No. And the winner of Leon Supermercado um, basket, which is a pretty cool basket, is Bo. So we'll be contacting them. Okay. Michelle. So the next one we have is Lamore Downtown Merchants. If I can get um you guys are all downtown uh before you draw if I can get a picture really quick. <laughs> yeah, you're a merchant somehow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three, cheese. Perfect. Thank you. Pick a good one, Michelle. And the winner of the bike from the downtown merchants goes to Isabella Horsling. Hey, Dr. Bornick, you're yep. up now. This is Lamore Hardware and Lamore Furniture. I'm an outdoor fire pit. Yep. Big jungle. All righty, ready? One, two, three, cheese. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. All right, sir. <laughs> All righty, and the winner of the from Lemore Hardware and Lemore Furniture, the fire pit goes to Devin, and we'll be contacting them. Thank you. And the last one we have, this is Mary from the Lemore Little League, and Lemore Little League, you guys come up. That's like a on the go party basket. Do the photo op. <laughs> That's nice. Ooh, look at this one. All right, squeeze in. Ready? You want to pick him up, Jeff? Or somebody? Yeah, you got to pick him up. Nobody will see him. Ready? One, two, look at over your butt. One, two, three, cheese. Perfect. You guys rock. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Good job. Thanks. Yeah. No, I'm trying to mix it up a little bit instead, actually. Yeah, all right. And the winner of the Lemore Little League wagon actually goes to Donna Brazer. We'd really like to thank um, everyone, all of the council members um, and all of those that donated that could and couldn't be here um, to everyone that went um, for all the hard work that um, our PD did and for our volunteer firefighters also too. Um, and I'm going to ask if all of those that donate, if you guys can come up and 
kind of be in front of the council and if council can stand up so we can get a picture of everyone that supported. In the middle. I would also like to thank um, Nick Machado and his family and the maintenance crew because they came out and helped us set up uh, tear down. Um, they really helped us out. They're instrumental. Trent and uh, Nye and Stephanie were also out there all day doing all that stuff. So I, I really want to thank them. They're a great crew. And all right, appreciate it. And one last thing uh, for report all day. Nye has been bugging me. He wants to get up here and talk. So I'm going to allow him to come up. <laughs> and I said, talk about breakfast with Santa. Please. Come on, Nye. Good job. Come on. Come on, Nye. Come on. It's your chance. Good job. Come on. Just speak on the mic. And, and he wants to say he got a new jacket. He's telling everybody he's got a new jacket. <laughs> no endorsements. No endorsements. He does not endorse anything. Um, we just want to say that we are going to be holding our breakfast with Santa um, this upcoming Saturday from 8 to 11. Tickets are on sale right now. If you guys are interested, um, uh, there's plenty of tickets available. You guys can buy them online through Eventbrite on our website um, at lamore.com, Instagram. Uh, you can also come into our office. We're open from 7 to uh, 5, uh, Monday through Thursday, um, to do in-person purchases as well. It'll be a lot of fun. We have cookie decorating for the kids, um, different like uh, games and stuff for the kids. Um, obviously, pictures with Santa as well uh, from GSP. So bring your families. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Again, thank you all for everything. And he's single. But in case anybody's uh, <laughs> the girls are interested. <laughs> he went there. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to public comment. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy. This time is reserved for members of the audience to address the city council on items of interest that are not on the agenda and are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each, and it is requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The council is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to addressing the council, any handouts for council will be provided to the city clerk for distribution to the council and appropriate staff. The public will have an opportunity to comment on items on the agenda once the item has been called and the mayor opens the item to the public. Is there any public comment at this time? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. So we're gonna go back to item 1-1, Tyler Technologies Implementation Update, Ms. Spear. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I am here this evening to provide just a brief update on our Tyler Technologies implementation. Um, this process began for staff about two years ago. It's been a very long and arduous process, and we have received um, go-live dates and have implemented two modules, um, mostly successfully. <laughs> um, it has not been without its hiccups. So I just want to run through this brief presentation. And then at the end, I'm going to go through the steps on how a citizen can log into a portal. And we'll learn more about that in a moment. Oh, I have a quicker. Question? Yes. Two of how many modules? Um, We have five. Thank you. You're welcome. So the first module that went live was the general ledger module. And for individuals who don't know, that's basically the financial backbone of the city. It's how, where your chart of account lives. It's how all of your financial accounting gets processed and booked into the system. Um, we had a complete chart of accounts change, meaning all of our funds and account numbers change. So it's been a completely different program for us. It was a very lengthy process. It's been pretty successful. Um, 
And so all of our financial activity is currently being booked in the new software. We're not using the old software for anything related to our general ledger any longer. We do have some portions of this software that still need to be built out. And that's just because it takes time and we had other things we were doing, but we are eventually going to be doing um, purchase order requisition processing through the system. Right now, we're still doing it manually, but that will be built out. There's also a project ledger module. Well, it's a module within a module so that we can track project level accounting by project number. So we're currently in the process of building that out. And then also our capital asset manager. So how we log and track all of the city's capital assets. Is there a trick to this? Okay. And um, the next module was human content management, which is basically the HR functions. We started implementation on this process about six months after we started the general ledger because we had to have those chart of accounts built out. This one went live in July as well. Um, and we processed our first payroll in the system July 14th of 2023. It was really exciting. And all of our current employee information lives in the new software. So we did a conversion and brought over any data from 2022, actually the 2023 fiscal year came over. Anything older than that still lives in our old system and we'll continue to have access to that for public records purposes. Uh, personnel action forms, which is the form that we document any personnel changes used to be done on paper. That's now done automatically through the system, um, through HR staff, and it links directly to anything related to an employee's payroll. We still have several functions that we need to build out. And I apologize because even with my glasses, I can't read what I wrote. Um, but performance evaluations are will eventually be rolled out through this software. Um, training and certification tracking. So right now, all training and certification of staff is being tracked on paper. It's not real efficient. Um, so we will be building that out in the software as well. And then what is my last one? Employee onboarding and orientation. Thank you so much. And then right now we do all paper packets for employee onboarding and for orientation. Eventually we'll be able to load all of those documents onto the software. And so new employees that are hired will be given a link and they'll be able to go through that and they'll be able to acknowledge that they've read it. And a lot of it will be automated and everything will be housed in one location. Can I ask a question? Do yeah. you have a timeline when that will be implemented? I don't. So technically, the module itself is implemented. We have to do some back end work. For instance, the training and certifications, we would have to decide if we want to bring over everything we have on paper, which quite frankly, would take an abundant amount of staff time or if we just want to start new. Um, we have been focusing on e calendar year end processes. So W-2s, 1099s. Um, so it, if we do it, it would be happening in 2024. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So part of that rollout for the HCM module was what's called employee self-service. So what it is, it's an employee-facing portal that anybody that's an employee with the city of Lemoore was given a link. They create a username and a password where before everybody would get a paper um, check stub, right? It's not real up with the times. <laughs> um, now they can go onto their portal and they can see everything. So it keeps a log of all of your previous checks. So I've redacted the personal information for this employee, but you can see that all the checks, there are the most five recent are listed, but they can click and see every check stub that's been issued since July. We didn't bring anything over from the old system because that would have been a very costly process, but they can see anything that's been run through the existing system and it will continue to accumulate. Um, there are a lot of really interesting features. So this year we did benefit enrollment through this process. In years past, it's been a bunch of paper forms. So our 100 plus employees would turn in four to five pages each, and the two or three HR staff members would have to manually go through all that. This year was automated. So for medical, dental, vision, and life, they were able to do this process through ESS, and it automatically integrated with our back end MUNIS, which tied to their personnel. So that meant that once those benefits went live, their first check in December, it started pulling their new rates. It made things so much simpler for us. The other thing is pay and tax information. So an employee can get online and they can look to see what their current um, tax deductions are, what their current salary is. It has a cool little graph where they can kind of play with the numbers. It has a paycheck simulator, so an individual can go in and say, hey, I think I want to go exempt on this next check, or what happens if I put an extra $50 towards my federal taxes and it actually runs the simulator for them so they can see what those changes make. Or I think on this next check, I'm going to have 25 hours of overtime. 
maybe I should put in some extra taxes. And that leads to W-4s. So the W-4 form is how they initiate or establish what their taxes are going to be or what they're claiming. Um, they can all do that through this portal now. Before they had to do a paper form, bring it to HR, and we had to process it manually. Now the employee initiates that change and it pushes it automatically to the system and HR just has to go and review it and click approve and it links it to the back end. W-2s, beginning this year, because again, we didn't bring over um, previous data, all W-2s that are generated out of this system will be stored and live here. So when we issue W-2s for 2023, they'll be in ESS. And then let's just say six months from now, somebody needs to provide a copy of a W-2 for a mortgage loan. They can go online to the portal. They can print it out. They always have access to it. Any questions about this portal? Where's all that information stored? Um, so we have what's called SaaS hosting. So when we're with Tyler Tech, it's stored on their cloud and it's encrypted and protected. And that's where it will stay going forward? Yes. After all, everything's implemented, do we pay a fee, annual fee? We do. It's part of our annual maintenance fee. Um, but they gave us, I can't remember the exact numbers, but when they gave us the costs for hosting it internally, it was actually going to cost us more money to buy the servers that we're going to be able to store all that data. So long-term, it's actually more cost-effective for the city to use their hosting service. So the most recent module is utility billing. We just went live with this module on November 1st. This was a very complicated process. We have about 8,000 utility customers in the city of Lemoore, and we had to bring over all that data from the old system, do the conversions. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but we just issued our first utility bill out of the new system last week. If residents have not yet gotten their new bill, they will. If they didn't get them today, they should be there tomorrow. Um, but I will explain in a few moments how people can go online and see them electronically if they'd like. Um, and that's going to be through the customer self-service portal, which is now open. It's very similar to the employee self-service portal, but it's designed to be customer-facing, so citizen-facing, where they can link all of their transactions with the city, including their utilities. We have two things that I think council will be really excited about. The first is we are going to continue to accept online payments for utility bills, but we are going to continue to do that through our current platform, which is Paymentus, and that's because of how our contract with them is generated. Um, we will eventually be moving to a fully integrated Tyler payment plan, but we can't do that until our contract with Paymentus is over, which is in, I believe, 2025. Um, in the meantime, though, it still works the same. There's a link on our website, which I'll show you in a minute, that takes them to Paymentus and they can still pay their bills online. Um, the other is the EFT. So there's been a lot of questions in recent months, especially for our service members that are being deployed about how they can go in and set up to have their utility bills paid automatically from their accounts. Our old system didn't allow it. This one does. We are still building that in the background. We have about eight more weeks before our bank has it set up for that to work, but we didn't want to delay the rollout of the utility billing. So just know that is coming. So I would say within the first quarter of 2024, EFT setup should be ready to go for our citizens. For transparency, what's EFT? Um, electronic funds transfer. Some people also call them ACHs, which automatic clearinghouse, I believe is what it's called. But it's basically where you go online and you authorize um, that service provider to automatically debit your account for your cost of service. So in September, we began implementation of the InterGov licensing and permitting process. This is everything that you can imagine that has to do with the planning process. So in developers um, that want to come in and provide a housing development, those projects will be tracked in InterGov. There will be a a workflow process where everybody involved in review of those plans can see what the person before them has done, make notes. It's a more comprehensive way of reviewing things electronically, eliminates paper, makes things more streamlined. Additionally, it's going to be the portion of the module that is going to handle everything related to building permits and building inspections. So when this is rolled out, employees, not employees, vendors, contractors are going to be able to go online or citizens and actually schedule building inspections. Um, if you pulled a permit because you had to have, you know, solar installed, then you'll be able to go online and you'll be able to A, apply for the permit, but also apply for the inspections when that's ready. And those permits will be issued electronically. One of the things that this is going to do that is going to 
kind of revolutionize the way we've done business is we currently cannot accept credit card payments for anything related to planning and permitting. And it's very cumbersome for our developers and our citizens to bring us checks. We will be accepting credit card payments when this module goes live so that those can be paid via credit card if the developer chooses. Um, and that will be allowed online as well. Um, we have about a year well, nine months now, I guess. September of 2024 is our target date. We are in the very beginning phases of rolling this particular module out. We've done probably 100 hours worth of staff training, um, and that process continues. I think they have four more days of training this month alone, and that will just continue to progress as we get closer to go live. Any questions? Oh, and code enforcement. Not necessarily PD code enforcement because they use their own software for that, but Fire code enforcement um, and building code enforcement is going to use this module to track those infractions as well. Um, to piggyback on Mayor Pro Tem's question about how many modules, I think I just did four. Um, we actually have two more. So we have Parks and Recreation um, and what we call Enterprise Asset Management, which is going to incorporate our fleets um, and all of our non-capitalizable assets. So we are actually starting the implementation process for the capital as uh, for the asset management in January. One of the challenges we faced is that we have so few employees and a lot of them are the same that are implementing these modules that we're having to stagger them so that way staff can be free to do that. Our finance manager who did a stellar job on this utility implementation, she pretty much did it alone, is actually going to be working with our fleet superintendent to do the asset management. So we had to wait until January before we could start that process. Um, the same thing is happening with Parks and Rec. Ray Greenlee, our uh, manager for community services, he is actually doing portions of the EPNL module implementation. And so we won't really be able to start Parks and Recs until that winds down so that we can free up that staff to start that process. I anticipate that all the modules will be open and go live by 2025. But that doesn't mean that there won't be certain functions of those modules that will still need to be built out, similar to what you've seen in human resources in the general ledger. So any questions about implementation before I move on to the riveting instructions on how to sign up for customer self-service? I have one quick question. Yes, um, When, I know you say that we're using the, the other place for payments online. Payment disk. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, when we are done with using them and we go fully on our software, is there still going to be a payment processing fee when you pay online? There is. And and that's up to council. Let me put that out there. So that depends. Council in the past said we want to pass that fee on to the customer. Um, I want to say that happened in about 2019 or 2020. And that's because prior to that, the city was spending about $150,000 a year just to cover those service fees for credit card transactions. And that's only when we were accepting credit card transactions online for utility payments. So if the council decided that they wanted the city to bear the burden for that, when we open up credit card swiping for all of the functions, you can imagine that's probably going to at least increase five to six times. So um, we it's called Tyler Payments. That's the integrated Tyler portion of it. Right now, we have it set up to continue to pass that fee on to the consumer. Thank you. I had a question. Is, is it normal to take about or take more than a year for implementation for all of it? Yes, I can tell you that when we went through the demonstration phase with Tyler Technologies, they said most implementations when you're doing this many modules, it's a minimum three to four year process. But when you're talking about an agency that also has limited staff, it is not uncommon for it to take longer. Um, I can't remember the exact cities I contacted before we picked them, but they had very similar experiences. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Question, sir. Michelle. Um, so, so you said there's five modules and you've got... I think six now. I think I miscounted. Okay, six and we've got two two done. We have the GL done, human resource... Three done. Human resources management done, utilities done, and we've started licensing and permitting, and then we still need to start parks and recreation and asset management. So that's... Six. Six. Three done, three, three more to go. go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you use the term, so what's your expectation as far as until we're complete, do we get the other three? How, how long? I don't anticipate that they'll all be integrated and go live until 2025, probably end of 2025. I think we probably have at least two more years left. Okay. And um, so when you talk about build out, what 
it's a build out for each one of those modules. Correct. Each one of them through Tyler Technologies is assigned a project manager on Tyler Technologies end that has specific experience in that module. And so Tyler creates a team and then we create a team. They do the training and the they do. And they right now it's all being done remote. Um, each session is between four and eight hours. So in some cases, some of our staff is spending two to three full days a week, which I try to limit it, um, because you can't really get your real job done and be stuck on the computer for an entire week. Um, but it's taking, it takes an excessive amount of time. So the first portion of the implementation process is doing an evaluation of your existing system, what works and what doesn't work. And then they help you build the new system to do what you want it to do. And then you start the conversion process and you start bringing over all of your own data into the software and testing it out. That I can just tell you for utility billing took four months for payroll that took us eight months. I think we probably did 12 payroll parallels before we got it to work. And that's just because there's so much that happens in the back end of the software to make sure that everything jives. When you when you talk about the payroll, are we doing any payroll stuff with time cards or is it all electronic? Oh, thank you for mentioning that. Yes. So before we went to Tyler Technologies, we had on we had hard copy time cards, <laughs> an Excel time card that everybody just kind of wrote in. And so when we went to Tyler, we migrated to what they call ExecuTime, which is their digital time card. And so now all time cards are submitted and approved digitally, and it has vastly improved our payroll process. In the past, it would take us about two and a half days to go through the time cards before we got to the point where we could actually start the payroll. Now we're getting that done in four to eight hours, depending on how complicated that payroll is. Good. Um, so are, are these uh, these build outs of these modules, was that included in the original cost? Yes, all of it is included. Okay. Uh, we had about an $89,000 contingency in case something happened and we needed additional training or we have not yet dipped into the contingency and we're three modules in. Okay. If we don't use it, then we just don't spend it. Okay. Um, so... On the original cost, uh, have we experienced any additional costs? No, because we haven't dipped into the contingency. Um, I'm trying to think. Let me come back to you guys with an analysis on the cost breakdown of where we're at because I wasn't prepared to answer that and I don't want to misspeak. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask if we had paid the original amount. Is that all done and paid? So we only pay as we go. Okay. So each of the costs associated with Tyler, the implementation costs are paid as that implementation happens. So we have paid for implementation for the GL human capital management, and we probably haven't paid the full bill for utility billing yet because we just completed it. So it's probably about 30 days behind. But for those three modules, the implementation portion should be mostly paid for. Um, but we won't pay for the other modules until we actually go through them. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Yeah, you said the implementation portion. Is there another portion? Well, because we're SAS hosted, there's going to be an annual fee every year that we're going to have to pay once we're implemented. And I believe it's about $275,000 a year just to host the software and to ensure that we have the most recent version. So they do updates every Saturday night. Um, and that's included in our SAS hosting agreement. Two hundred seventy-five per module, or just per year? No, just for everything. Mm -hmm, correct. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's after all six are implemented, right? Um, we pay up. I think we continue. We pay it now. Um, I again, let me come back to you with the financials because I it's been two years since I really looked at that, so I don't want to misspeak. Okay, so now we're going to move into um, just a PDF version. Um, I did it as a PDF because I wanted individuals from the community to be able to go online to the website and grab this and print this as instructions. So we'll be posting this online after the meeting. Um, the citizen self-service portal is more, for more than just utility billing. But because that's the only module that has a citizen-facing activity right now, that's the only thing they're really going to see. At some point when we go live with EPNL and Parks and Recreation, those other functions are going to show on citizen self-service. So one of the things I want to let everybody know is that in the old system in utility billing, you are identified by your account number. And that account number was tied to your property. Now, the account number exists on the property and the individual is given a customer number. And the reason why that's important is because if you move houses, 
your account number is going to change because that account number is tied to the property, but your customer number never will. That's your, your individual identifier. And the reason for that is that continue to track your activity for the things you do through the city as you move and get more involved and do more things. And um, that's going to be a pretty significant change to what has currently been done. So in order to access this citizen self-service portal, you're going to want to go ahead and click on, go to the website, www.lamore.com and click on online bill pay. So I've listed there how to do that. And then you're going to see two buttons at the bottom. Very briefly, I want to touch the button on the right that says online bill, bill pay. That's how people are going to continue to pay their bill online through Paymentus. So you're just going to click on that and it'll take you to pay your bill. The button on the left is how you're going to access the citizen self-service portal. So you're going to see online self-service and they're going to click on this button. And then it's going to take you to the login page. So in the upper right hand corner, they'll see that there's a login button that they'll select. And then it's going to pop up with these different options for how you can log in. You can do it if you have Google or Apple. But if you don't have any of those things, at the very bottom, there's a little link that says don't have an account, sign up. So for first time users, that's where you're gonna wanna go. You're gonna click on the sign up button. I know this sounds rudimentary, but somebody might actually need this. So you click on the sign up button and then it's gonna ask you to create an account. Once you've created a username and a password, it's gonna populate to the screen that you see here. It automatically goes to an account settings page. Um, if you click on the little person in the upper right and click my account, it's gonna take you to your account information. Below the, the yellow and the light blue, that's a snippet of what the top of your new utility bill is gonna look like. And the two errors, errors, arrows identify where you can find your account number and your customer number, because you're gonna need those when you set up your accounts. And you'll push, put them in this section right here for the account link setup. And then once you do that, the account settings on the bottom, you'll see where the yellow arrow is. There's gonna, again, error, error, arrow, is gonna point to your account number. That's how you know that your utility account is linked. That's just a fake number, obviously, but, because we didn't want everybody looking at everybody's utility bills. <laughs> so then you're gonna get an account summary. And this account summary page looks like this. It's gonna have your name, your service address. It's gonna say the date your last bill payment was posted. And then you're going to be able to click on manage bills. I didn't show it here, but on the left-hand side, there's going to be a menu. And if you click on manage bills, it's going to show you your most recent bill, which is this slide right here. And if you hit the show past bills, it's going to populate everything. And then next to each bill, there's a bill detail. So you can go into it and you can see exactly what you've been billed for. It's literally all at the click of a button. So no more having to wait for your actual statement to come online. Once you see the, the breakdown, you'll be able to, and Ms. Clerk, if you wanna scroll right there, it's gonna show you an account breakdown for you, your water meter fee, your metered water. To be clear, no rates have changed in this process, none at all. The look of your bill looks a little different, but it's all billing you for the exact same thing. We just tried to provide more, more information than you saw in the past. And the last cool feature um, that Citizen Self-Service has that you couldn't see before is um, viewing consumption. So you can go on at any time and you can see what your previous meter reads were. And it's going to give you a 12-month comparison snapshot of what your usage has been over the previous 12 months. Ms. Clark, can you scroll up a little? Or no, other way down, I guess. Keep going. Okay, so this is the meter page. I do want to point something out. This is how the meter reads happened in the old system versus how they happened in the new system. Nothing changed. Everybody is still billed on 100 cubic feet. But when we did the conversion from the old system to the new system, it didn't drop the double zeros. So everything from 10.4 all the way down to 12.2, you'll notice that it's showing in, in full hundreds. If you want to compare it to the billing cycle that happened on 11.3, you're just going to drop those last two digits, and that's how you're going to make the comparison. But nothing changed. This individual is getting billed for 300 cubic feet, just like they would have in the old system. But eventually, as you get more current bills through the new software, you're going to get to see your comparison, and you can do kind of like a seasonal comparison if you'd like. Um, 
that's really it in a nutshell. Again, as we start implementing more modules and more features become available, I'll come back and describe those to council and to the public as well. But that's just a pretty handy feature. So people can go online right now if they wanted and set up an account. And if they haven't received their bill yet in the mail, they will be able to do so. Oh, one thing. They can also set up their bill preferences, meaning do you want to get it via email or do you want to get it in the mail? This first cycle had to be done by mail. But this next cycle, so the bill that will go out in December or beginning of January, if they go online between now and the time that we process it and they elect to have their bill sent via email, then the bill will be sent to their e the email of their choosing instead of getting a hard copy. That was one of the questions I had. Also, another question I had was, does your information follow your account number or does any of that information stay with the property number? For the way I understand it, and I will ask my finance manager tomorrow, is that you are linking your customer number to this. So if you move residence and you get another account number because you've moved, your history should show and your new account number should show. Okay. So... Right now, there's no capacity to link my bank account with payment of utilities. Not yet. We just had another meeting about that today. I am anticipating six to eight weeks, and that will be ready. Any other questions from council? Do you have a link set up to teach people how to do everything you just explained? Otherwise, you're going to be explaining this about 500 times on the phone over the next. So this set of instructions is going to be posted on the website for people to grab and use it. Obviously, if they still need assistance, they can call over to the utility billing office and we'd be happy to walk them through the process. Yeah, there's no, there's uh, our provider doesn't provide a primer online with a voiceover or anything. This They don't know, provide us what, I'm sorry? You want to set up your, if you want to link your bank account to bigger utility bill there's no oh through this bigger. no they have a set of written instructions like we have but it's so comprehensive and it's it's talking about modules that we haven't even implemented yet that we had to kind of pare that down so that people didn't get confused about what was available now and what will be available in the future thank you okay uh, one other question mm -hmm. so when is your drop dead date that everybody's got to be paying online uh, we're not going to require that anybody pay online. Right. They can if they choose. We still accept payment over the phone. They can still mail or walk in a check, and they can still pay in person. So citizens will be able to walk into the main office or have to go around the back? or Into finance. You have to pay your utility bills out of the finance office, which is the building on the east side, where they pay them now. Any other questions from council? Are there any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Next, department and city manager reports. Mr. Olson. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. First up tonight is Chief Kendall. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I just want to give out the reminder for our second shopping day for reason for the season uh, is this Saturday at 6 a.m. at the Hanford Walmart. Uh, the gift wrapping for all those presents bought last weekend and this weekend will take place at the police department on the 12th at 9 a.m. until uh, whenever we're done. And then on the 15th is the actual reason for the season event uh, at 1 p.m. also at the police department. And then presence on patrol will be on the 20th at 1 p.m. Uh, lastly, uh, as you guys may have uh, seen, there's a press release put out. Um, but last week, last Friday, Saturday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, we partnered with the Sheriff's Department, Hanford Police Department, and the Corcoran Police Department, as well as some federal uh, entities um, to conduct an operation to combat human trafficking and child exploitation. This resulted in 19 countywide arrests, and two of those arrests occurred within the city of Lemoore. Uh, like I said, this is a three-day operation. I just wanted to thank the seven investigators 
that we had assigned to this operation for all their hard work. So that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Frank is up next. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Just want to uh, update you. So um, last week we completed that crack fill project uh, on Lamore Avenue, and um, tonight uh, the uh, striping, which is will, which will follow, um, uh, we hope to have the striping done within the next two to three weeks. But it'll actually uh, cover Lamore Avenue from the um, the freeway overpass on the north side of the of the the highway. The Glendale, and then from Fox Street easterly to the county line, that'll um, occur over the next few weeks, and so we'll brighten up the um, the stripes, the markings, the reflectors uh, to get us through the the winter. And that's all I have for you. Are they gonna? Well, I'll, I'll ask my question when it comes up. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, sir. And just one quick announcement out of my office. So Monday we'll be hosting another um, city manager roundtable. Uh, so it's 12, 11 between three and five. We still have available seats. So if anybody wants to attend that, you can either call into the office or just um, RSVP to the city clerk at Lamore.com. I think there's six seats remaining. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll go ahead and move on to the consent calendar. Items considered routine in nature are placed on the consent calendar. They will be considered and voted upon in one vote as one item unless a council member or member of the public requests individual consideration. 4-1, approval of minutes for regular meeting, November 21st, 2023. 4-2, approval, bid award, pavement striping and marking. 4-3, approval of budget amendment, Lamore Police Shoe Drive. 4-4, approval memorandum of agreement for fire and emergency services and site and use agreements between the City of Lemoore and Lemoore Volunteer Fire Department Association Incorporated for use of City Fire Station facility. So I have a request to pull um, item 4-4 four four for individual consideration on the vote. Okay. Is there anyone on council that would like to pull any other items? I'd like to pull 4-2. Four dash two. Any other items? Is there uh, anyone from the public that would like to pull any items from the consent calendar? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion for the approval of four dash one and four dash three. Motion to approve four dash one and four dash three. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Lyons and a second by Councilmember Orth. Councilmember Lyons. Yes. Council Member Orth? Yes. Council Member Garza? Yes. Council Member Gornick? Yes. And I vote yes as well. 4 2. Did you have a specific question or concern? Yeah. <laughs> I went over the uh, staff report and it was maybe confusing to me, not to maybe not other people. Now, the exact question is when they stripe down 18th they're going to do all lines and on the bid it showed a dollar amount if you marissa can you go down a little please uh it to the actual bid it showed where it's like um it had four four columns and then it had a dollar amount and then it had another column that had a, like a hundred and thirteen thousand if we yeah this right there. The top four total is 86.839. That's what we're bidding on. Right? That's what we're agreeing on tonight, correct? Yes. The other the other one was uh was a thermoplastic bid, which I, I believe all we're doing is painting. So um when we move forward, another so the thermoplastic is basically like a, a, a resin mm -hmm. that's melted that creates the, the crosswalks and the markings. That if we did that was going to be the hundred thirteen thousand, and I think because due to our budget we were working over the hundred hundred thousand, we went with the uh, with the above, just the the above items. So there's going to be no uh, no thermoplastic. It'll well, be there's also no. Uh, well, there's 
there's still markers though, like the little reflectors, right? Yes. Yes. Everything will be the difference is the thermal is the thermal plastic. Plastic. Yes. Okay. Okay. That was my question. I so now is it the 113 on top of the 86 or is it so we will the difference between 86 and 113? So we had bid, we had we had the contractor bid it two ways. Okay. One was with the thermal plastic and one was with the out. Oh, okay. That's... And then because we could only afford to do the yeah the above, but everything will be striped. There are some there are some markers that we just did um probably about six months ago as part of the uh, safe route to school. Those that are still fresh, we're gonna leave those leave untouched them. and we're gonna move it to somewhere else that needs okay. it along the street. That was it was just I'm sure it wasn't that confusing, but it was because I didn't know if we we're going to get all the arrows yeah. and all that. Yeah. Because I looked at the the map of showing all the arrows and. Yeah, it's it's hard when when you're trying to, you know, trying to get your project as far as you you would like it to be, you want to have some options so that you can do as much as you can with the money that you have available. So. Okay, that's yeah. all I had. That's all. I'm Any good. other questions from council? You know, I, I was just uh, in reading this uh going through the bid uh is this a contract that we've used before they have they have one yeah they have done work in lamarcus okay is it a big operation or the only reason no. i say this well, there's a lot of paperwork involved in the bid process and i can see a lot of a lot of yeah no they, they you know work. matter of fact they they probably did a a, a citywide project like two years ago okay. yeah yeah it took, yeah. a, it took a month to do it because they did it at night. I mean, all the requirements travel. that the state has in the county. I mean, oh, yes. Unbelievable. And being on the middle of the road is not easy. Yeah. So, yeah, they're yeah. Not sure they're not there. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any questions from the public? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and bring you back to council for a motion for approval. Motion to approve 4 2. Second. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Orth and a second by Council Member Gornick. There's like a tie there. Mm -hmm. Council Member Orth? Yes. Council Member Gornick? Aye. Council Member Garza? Yes. Council Member Lyons? Aye. And I vote yes as well. Item 4 4 approval memorandum of agreement for. Oh, I already read it. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So, Council, my colleague Rob Lamelli is here this evening to um, break down what you have before you. Um, as well as to answer any questions. If you recall, he is my colleague that worked with the city and the fire department on developing these agreements. Thank you. Mayor Matthews, Council. So what you have before you uh, this evening is a memorandum of agreement and a site and use agreement. Both of the items uh, are intertwined with one another and depend on one another uh, to be effective. Uh, essentially, the memorandum of agreement for fire and emergency services lays out uh, the roles, responsibilities, and duties of the city and of the Lemoore Volunteer Fire Department Association as it pertains to the provision of emergency services and fire services. The site and use agreement uh, is uh, a separate agreement, but it's very dependent upon the memorandum of agreement because it also delineates and identifies the roles and duties of the city and of the association as it pertains to equipment, uh, the fire station, vehicles, uh, hoses, all of the other apparatus that they use. Um, in fact, the, the uh, site and use agreement actually has a term that is married to the term within the memorandum of agreement. So it's dependent upon uh, the effectiveness of the MOA. So as long as the MOA is in, in effective and once it expires, the site and use agreement as a matter of course also will become effective and expire. Um, so this uh, these agreements were worked out in conjunction with the association uh, and the city to be able to address some of the concerns of both parties, um, and it was arrived at collectively, and we feel that it does help to adequately ensure that both parties uh, are able to continue to provide the services that they have been to the city of Lamar. Any questions from council? Uh, yeah, I have a question. I, I guess I saw this as two agreements. Uh, just a difference of opinion in that. But uh, what prevents the uh, volunteer fire department from uh, deciding to meet twice a month? 
And that would be for their for their monthly meetings. Yeah, let's say they want to have two of them a month instead of one. So they do they do have an ability to be able to continue those meetings that have historically occurred, uh, and that they do as routine matter and course of business. However, if they wanted to uh, hold additional meetings that were not provided within the site and use agreement, they would need to uh, go through the city manager to obtain. Uh, you know, permission to be able to hold any uh, type of meetings or uses that weren't necessarily related to the provision of fire services. Is that is that stipulated in either one of those agreements? It is in Section 5 of the Site and Use Agreement. Is that other uses? Correct. Part of it. Part of it. Yeah. 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 Kind of, yeah. It kind of comes yeah. in both yeah. of them. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Is there any questions or comments from the public or the fire department? <laughs> Being then I'll go ahead and bring it back to council. And so council, um, uh, vice mayor, you're correct. These are two separate agreements. It's up to council. You can vote on each one separately or a motion can be made to approve both at the same time. I'd like to make a motion to approve 4-4 as read, both of them. I have a motion by Councilmember Orth. Second. Second by Councilmember Garza. Councilmember Orth. Yes. Councilmember Garza. Yes. Councilmember Lyons. Yes. Councilmember Gornick. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Moving on to brief, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> City Council reports and requests. Council Member Garza, sorry. I just want to give a special thank, thank you guys to our uh, you. donors uh, for the Jingle and Mingle raffle. Um, it's a good thing that they're doing that. So I just want to say thank you to all the donors and to you guys also. And I uh, wish everybody, well, I think we have another council meeting before, right? But I think I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I love our sweaters that we got going on today. So. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Council Member Lyons. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Stephanie and I and uh, Ray and his whole department for the uh, downtown celebration. We did the uh, Jingle and the Mingle and also, were you guys a part of the Christmas parade? I know you helped, but but that was a uh, chamber event, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And the fire department for putting up that tree every year. The one thing I will suggest is, uh, I'll talk to you in private about that. Never mind. We'll, we'll do that off. <laughs> um now uh nathan you and all of your crew you guys actually you guys do a good job you really do and i know it's not easy i know you guys are faced with a lot of difficult things on a daily basis and it does not go unseen so thank you guys and chief you and the police thanks for your guys's donation and handing out tickets and stuff thank you sir <laughs> Okay, well, I do want to thank all the staff, everyone that had everything to do with the downtown um, jingle and mingle and the tree lighting that it, it's amazing to sit down there and watch all the hard work that everyone does to do that and the firefighters and I watched them for I think the third or fourth year in a row to put that tree in there. It's, it's amazing to watch them do that and everyone involved. I mean, there's a lot of hard work and we're silly. silly. Uh, it was good. It is. Um, and the parade, I think, was awesome. I had the pleasure of riding in a fire truck with uh, Mayor, uh, Madam Mayor, and uh, there was a lot of people at this parade. I, I Some people say it was the biggest one. I, there was a lot of, and it, it warmed my heart to see everyone come out, and I'm really glad the Santa didn't get clipped. Um, <laughs> that was probably a good thing, um, but uh, I think that's what we're going to work on. <laughs> But anyways, uh, all the donors, everybody that came out, I mean, it was an awesome event. It's it's really good to see how our city's um, coming together. Uh, fire department, thank you. You guys work hard. Uh, police, you guys do hard too. You guys, thank you for stopping all the, the uh, what do they call those? Uh, not drug traffickers, but the, human, traffickers. Human, traffickers. human traffickers. And I actually heard that 
they actually caught two young ladies. They they rescued two young ladies that were actually involved. So that's and they're young, weren't they? Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Good job. Good work. Um, thanks everybody. Have a Merry Christmas if we don't come back next next two weeks. <laughs> Councilmember Bornick. Yeah, I want to ditto everybody's comments uh, uh, about uh, the parade and all the festivities and Parks and Rec. You guys have done a great job this year. Uh, the um, I wasn't able to attend the uh, parade, but I had in the morning, Saturday morning, I had an opportunity to, uh, I was on the east end of town and I said, you know, I'll just make a shortcut and just go right downtown. Then I saw the signs. I thought, oh, no, I could still go. It doesn't start until. But what struck me from from 19th, just, just under the arch, on both sides of the street, all the way out to the last arch, you know, uh, downtown, the uh, chairs that were set up and seats and a couple of cots, a couple of sleeping cots, I really <laughs> saw. But on, on both sides, I mean, there was no, and people were very, uh, creative you know they had their chairs locked all wired together and locked down and uh you know they knew where they were sitting they had they had paid for those seats somehow and uh, it, it it was just nice to see and the, the individuals who were in the car with me said what is this what's going to happen i said this is the christmas parade and uh, they said this is better than macy's i said well yeah i guess so <laughs> it's our macy's you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. anyway no a good good time uh, merry christmas and happy new year to everybody and I uh, thank those merchants for all the stuff that they donated. That was great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, you have something yeah. to add? One thing I failed to mention in my department reports is we have uh, items for a meeting in two weeks, but through the holidays, we have a lot of staff in and out on vacation on that. I'm looking for consensus if we can maybe cancel that January 2nd meeting. So the first meeting in January. Don't, doesn't look like we have anything pressing to go that week. So uh, it, with council's permission, we'd like to cancel the first meeting in January. Yeah, I don't have it. I'm good. We have consensus. Okay, thank you. In my brief report, mm -hmm. um, I did attend Hurtado's open house for her office here in town with city manager Olson. Uh, the city presented a certificate on, uh, on behalf of the city. Sorry, I wrote while I was thinking. Uh, honor and then goodness. This is what happens when I try to be quick. Um, Senator Hurtado honored a retired senior chief petty officer, Guadalupe Garcia, after 26 years of service with a Senate, re resol Senate resolution. So that was pretty awesome to witness. She was in complete shock. So she didn't know it was coming and it was, it was, it was awesome to see. I also want to thank everybody involved for the jingle and mingle and especially the fire department for allowing the community to take part in that um, tradition of your guys's and and make it bigger and and better and and get the community involvement. So thank you guys for for that and um, everybody involved, everybody with the donations, everybody that all the vendors that showed up and especially the community that showed up and showed out in like full support. So that's part of what makes Lamore Lamore. So um, my uh, gratitude to all those involved. Um, let's see the Christmas parade. Um, thank you to the chamber for putting that on. It was pretty amazing. As everyone had said, um, I did get some feedback from some, some of the community that I will be passing on to the city of Hanford that ours was better. So, um, I will rub that in their face a little bit. Um, I did attend the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District Citizen Advisory Committee today. The only thing really to report out for that is that there was a resolution. Last week, there was a res resolution between the EPA, um, an ag organization, and the Air District stating that the Central Valley has met our PP 2.5 requirement goals, um, which is huge for the EPA and uh, the Air District to acknowledge um, it was very aggressive campaign to get us there and Central Valley did it. So they acknowledged it. They can't take it back. It happened. It's in writing. So great job. Uh, I will be attending King's Waste and Recycling meeting tomorrow morning. So nothing to report there. Um, I want to 
remind everybody to please keep in mind uh, November 7th as Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. So please take some time out of your day to remember uh, what happened on that day. Um, the city manager and myself will be attending next week, Devin Mathis's lunch for electeds. And I also wanted to thank council for being great sports and participating in my shenanigans and everybody wearing Christmas sweaters. You guys are team players. I appreciate it. I appreciate your sense of humor and I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, so with that, we will go ahead and go to closed session. And that we have item one, government code section 54957, public employee performance evaluation for city manager. Thank you.